The Gospel according to Matthew, the 11th chapter. Jesus spoke to the crowd saying, to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking and they say he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking and they say, look, a glutton and a drunker, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning and blessings to all. It's no secret that during these times in our country, we're divided and the world is watching. We are all in one way or another, feeling the effects of the pandemic and social justice movement. We're starting to lose control and it shows. Our media is showing us and giving us different information. Leaders are not on the same page. Conversations of frustration and anger are more common. We are hearing, but not listening to each other. It sometimes feels like we have lost hope in one another. So what now? Do we sit around and wait for things to change on their own? Or do we ignore the situation completely and let others fix it? Jesus tells us, come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. He isn't saying, come and take a holy vacation. I need it badly. It might be true that we all need a vacation, but that is not what he is saying. He is saying that it is harder to live up to the world's expectations of you than to live up to God's. To better understand this passage, let us first look at what a yoke is. A yoke is a kind of harness that is used for oxen to get them to pull a cart of far or farming equipment. Typically, a yoke joins two oxen together to work as a team. Jesus invites us to take his yoke and to learn from him. He is inviting us to join him in harness, to allow him to take the lead, to let him help us through difficult places, to give him the opportunity to show us how it's done. Are there any here today who've been wary? Have any of you ever carry a heavy burden? A year and a half ago, I moved from Alaska to Arizona. The move was not an easy move. I took a call here at Holy Trinity and my family and I left to start a new chapter in our lives. I learned right away that the pace of life in Arizona was a lot different than Alaska. In my first year, my family and I have experienced what I like to call the Arizona hot package. Our battery died, our AC went out in July while my wife was seven months pregnant. We're learning how to keep the temperature at an affordable degree and going on a hike in the middle of July at noon is a bad idea. But I've also learned something else. Even though we all have experienced these situations here in the desert, I started to understand that I did not have to do this alone. The people around me became teachers, mentors, a community that came to our aid in those times of, of need. I also realized that my wife and kids were going through these changes as well with me. And as much as I tried to carry all these burdens by myself, I could not. 
it was exhausting. I remember Pastor Chris' first comment when I told her about my AC breaking in the house. She said, why did you wait too long to tell us? You should have told us sooner. Making that statement, followed by her hospitality of letting us stay in her house until the AC got fixed, put in perspective the idea that we don't have to take on these things alone. It has been a humbling experience to understand that the world is only against you if you take it on by yourself. Those things that we consider burdens and the things that make us weary take us from the reality that struggles in our life happen to all of us. The situation might look and feel different, but we have to take on these problems with the humility and meekness that Jesus showed. As a church, and when I say church, I don't mean a specific denomination. I mean the people that you're sitting next to. We have a responsibility to care for our neighbors and communities, to share the good news. One of the most revolutionary parts of Jesus' ministry was calling us to live for one another. If you're asking yourself the question or wondering, how can I do that? I'm not a pastor. I'm too shy or no one will listen to me. Well, here's the good news. You don't need to be a theologian or scholar to know who Jesus is. So if this is true, why is it hard for some of us to share our faith? Nadia Bowles Weber is an ordained Lutheran pastor, founder of the House for All Sinners and Saints in Denver, Colorado. Pastor Nadia is a pastor who doesn't reflect what we're used to in our churches to be a pastor. Her skin is filled with tattoos, her words are anything but censored, and she hangs out with the crowd that would make a lot of us uncomfortable. But yet, she allows herself to be vulnerable to these communities of when one might consider society's outcasts, the drug addicts, alcoholics, those who had been rejected from the world. She helps them by using the language that those people understand. With a body art that only that crowd can appreciate, this unconventional preacher lets them all know that they are loved by God and that there is grace in a place for them in God's house. Her joy and passion for ministry is a reflection of her past and present experiences. She's just one example of how following Christ is about humbling yourself and looking upon the world in an unbiased manner, loving, loving those around you and experiencing God as you experience life. When God came to the earth, he just saw us as children who needed to be loved and he showed just how far he would love us. Loving God and neighbor does not look like just one thing. It looks like many things. It looks like you being who you were created to be, but just in a loving way. In our community, we're doing everything we can to understand this idea. From the beginning of the pandemic, Holy Trinity has been in the front lines. Gift of monetary donations have been made to support our Navajo Nation. We continue to make masks for local hospitals and other organizations and continue collecting food and toiletries for our food banks. We're also providing online worship services for our congregations near and far. Even though the burden continues to still be there, Holy Trinity continues to make those burdens lighter. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, Ministry matters. As we continue to pay attention to our needs of our world, remember to breathe and take time to appreciate all the wonderful and amazing things our Creator has provided for us. Because, of the, because at the end of the day, we can only have change if we start working together. Amen. song, O oh God of all the nations, a song of peace for lands afar and mine. This is my home, the country where my heart is. Here are my hopes, 
my dreams, my holy shrine. But other hearts in other lands are beating with hopes and dreams as true and high as mine. My country skies are bluer than the ocean, and sunlight beams on clover, leaf, and pine. But other lands have sunlight too, and clover, and skies are everywhere as blue as mine. So hear my song, O God of all the nations, a song of peace for their land and for mine. I pray, O oh God of all earth's kingdoms, your kingdom come, on earth your will be done. O oh God, be lifted up till all shall serve you and hearts united learn to live as one. So hear my prayer, O God of all the nations, myself I give you, let your will be done.